Amen. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. God is so good. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I I am Joe T. Wallace, glory to God, Bishop Elect. Welcome to this TV broadcast. Praise the Lord. God bless you. How are you today? You know this is who is it? Hey, Amen. This is your friend. Yep, this is me. Yeah, Pastor Bishop Elect Joel Wallace. We just thank God for you. Amen. For tuning in today. Well, as you see, we're here at the worship center. We decided, glory to God, to just bring this broadcast, amen, right here from the worship center. We want to thank God for all of you out there in television land. Thank God for all our partners, all of you that have been uh, watching, amen, and enjoying uh, the programs. I tell you, what a wonderful time we have here in the worship center. It's a wonderful thing. You know, God is just so good, especially where we came from. All of you have been following us for a few years. Amen. We've been pastoring, you know, our first church over at Piquet. We just thank God for it. And God has expanded us. And it's a wonderful thing to see what God is doing. You know, we want you to have an open invitation to always come and be a part of this ministry. Uh, whether by uh, being here live or uh, online, amen, watching the videos. Uh, we just say, amen, it's always a place for you to come. Uh, AFC is a ministry that we thank God for because one of the things that we show here is love. It's so important to love one another. Um, today in the time we live and you see how people are acting, you see how the politicians are fighting each other and how they are um, reacting to each other and digging up dirt on one another and, and now even the family members are be, being involved in uh, politics by who's the prettiest and all that, you know. We just thank God in the house of God. We don't go through that. We just thank God being in Christ. He loves everybody. Can I tell you something? He died for you that on uh, the other side of the country as well as you here in the United States of America. We thank God that we are part of this great movement, this Christianity, this walk that we walk, this lifestyle that we have and, and we thank God for it and we want you to know I mean you should uh, be a part of that if, if you're not a Christian if you're not a believer in Jesus Christ and him being crucified and being risen on the third day you should he died for you amen and being a part of this Christian walk is one of the most blessed things I ever could have been involved in uh, being raised in the church as a youngster I thank God that I know my roots and uh, I'm here serving God. I've been serving Him for a while. You know my story. I don't have to go back into it. Amen. I'm being 18. I got a chance to go out and see what the world was about. And uh, God pulled at me, told me it was time to come home after uh, so many years. And, and I thank God for that, that in the house of God, there's refuge, there's peace, there's joy. There's happiness all in the Holy Spirit. And I want to invite you to be a part of this ministry. I want to invite you to take part. Go to Facebook. Go uh, to YouTube. Watch the videos. Uh, watch the uh, things that God has done. That will encourage you. We have great testimonies um, through the older as well as the young here at this ministry. We're going to take you to a service uh, this morning. And dealing with Believing God, trusting God, and speaking His Word. And I want you to go, I want you to enjoy it, amen. And uh, we'll come back uh, in the end of this, and uh, we will talk to you again, all right? Listen, go into the program, and we'll talk to you a little later.
Amen. Let's go to the Word of God. Uh, Mark 11. Let's start uh, 19, please. And when the evening, when the evening was come, he went out of the city, talking about Jesus. In the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig trees dried up from the roots. Peter, called to remember, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree without curse is withered away. Yeah. Jesus answered, said unto him, have faith in God. Yeah. 23, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith or she shall come to pass, he or she shall say, shall have whatsoever he saith. Yeah. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. 25. And when you stand praying, forgive, for if you have all against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you of your trespasses. One more verse. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. Father, help us right now, we pray, Lord, God, for the Word. We pray that, Lord, the Word will go out and help somebody, Lord, have mercy, to be in you, to help them to be what they are supposed to be. Help them to go through the test, the trials, the tribulations, the challenges. I pray now in Jesus' name. Somebody say, Amen. may be seated. I want to just be brief. I won't be long. I just want to help the saints today in dealing with God and dealing with what the Word said. The, the, the story is simple. Jesus went to the fig tree. And when he went to the fig tree, he wanted something to eat because he was hungry. Nothing was there. So he cursed it. And he walked on. They came back from out of the city and when they came back by, Peter looked at the tree. He said, Jesus, the tree that you cursed is with your way. Yeah. Jesus told him to have faith in God. Or, if you, if you look at that in the Greek, it says to have the faith of God. And we know when God created. In the book of Genesis, it says, God said, and it happened. Yeah. In having the faith in God, or the faith of God, God had faith in his word. Yeah. Now, when he created the heavens and the earth, when he said it, it happened. Now, it, it takes a lot for us as humans to understand what it means to take the word, the raw word of God. Okay, Lord, I got it. Okay. The, the raw word of God and, and to be one that believes in what God is saying yeah. and being one with God. Mm. What do you mean by it? Simple. When you're one with God, you're one with what God says. Yeah. Amen. If you have a partner, brother, sister, whomever, amen, and, and you were in turmoil, watch this, and you said, you are going to get a beat down. Me and my friend are going to beat you to a pole. Well, in order for the friend to get involved in what you said, they had to believe in your word. Yeah. Amen. Anybody catching that? Yeah. And so when it started, amen, the beatdown came not only from the one who said it, but the one they said was going to help them. Yeah. It's the same way we look at God's word today. We look at his word, and his word is real. The Bible says that he, his word go out and obtain that which it goes out to do. Yeah. That means uh, that we have to remember the end part of that. The end part that says, and when it comes back, it's not coming back void. It's going to do what it was sent out to do. No matter what the situation is. Listen, I don't know if you have, have you ever been on the telephone and somebody said, pray for me. 
and, 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 and you haven't, you weren't there to lay hands, but you spoke the word of God. Come on, help me, Jesus. And then something happened. Uh, the person got better. Amen. Over the telephone, that, that, just hear the voice. I had a kid in the hospital that was laying in the bed, and I told them, put the phone to their ear so they could hear me pray. Come on. Amen. And, and when we learn how to have the faith of God, that no matter what happens in life, we can speak to it by the name of Jesus Christ and watch some things to happen. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. It is the power of God. What are you talking about, Pastor? I'm talking about the power of the spoken word. See, everybody, everybody uh, does not want to get into uh, the, the power of the spoken word. Everybody don't, don't want to lay there, don't want to be there, don't want to set their camp there. But that's what we have to do in order to make it through the world that we're living in. We have to take the word of God that's written in this Bible. When Jesus said it was going to happen, it's going to. Come on. It might have been a long time ago, but it's going to happen. When the Lord says, if I'm for you, then I'm more than the world against you. Then you need to realize that no matter what they say, no matter what Sally is saying, Lucretia and the rest of them, they are not going to hurt you because God is on your side. Come on, give God some praise right now. You to say, have faith in God, have the faith of God. One thing I've learned, let me tell you something, now the challenges in my life. You know, there's nothing that money can buy, amen, to change the result of what somebody sees. What do you mean by that? Well, uh, when you look at somebody say your toe is hurt, and you go and they say your toe is fractured, amen. There is not enough money. You don't have enough money in your bank. Watch this now. To have your toe healed, amen, and fixed right on the spot. Well, the doctor will put a cast on it. Come on. The doctor will wrap it up and say, wait for the healing. Can I tell you the truth? Only God can heal, not the doctor. Can you just clap your hands if you believe that? So, consequently, when we go through our challenges in life, there is times that we need to speak the word of God and believe what God's word says about us. And, and no matter what the situation is, by your stripes, I am healed. Somebody say, by your stripes, I am healed. In Jesus' name. Now put your hand together. Just stop right like there. Just stay right there. Stay right there. We have to believe with our mouth what we confess out of our heart. The Bible says, in the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. See, it ain't no sense in cussing folk out when they get, when they get on your nerve. What good is it going to do? People are going to be disconnected and simple, irregardless of what you say. Am I right about it? But what I learned about people is to pray for them. Lord, help sister so-and-so because her elevator is stuck. And it's not going all the way to the top. Y'all know what I'm saying? Amen. Uh, help brother so-and-so because he don't have all his marbles there. Some things are missing. Amen. Cussing him out is not going to do it. But praying for him will help him in his situation. What about you as a person? Well, Lord, I need help because I'm going through something and I need you to come right now. Well, the Bible says in first time, this is the confidence that we have approaching God. That in anything that we ask according to his will, he hears us. Do you know something? God loves us because of who we are. Do you know that God loves his children? Some of y'all don't know that. I don't know what you've done in the past. God's mercy, his grace have covered us, amen, from the stuff that we have done, amen, and watched over us. Can somebody say amen to that? When it comes to life, and us in life and what we do, I want to tell you something, saints of God. There is something about us and what we believe and how we react to life. 
One thing I can tell you, the enemy wants to defeat you. He wants to stop you. When you have a mission, amen, uh, in this life that you live, the enemy wants to stop you. How many know that they've been stopped, tried to, and they tried to stop them in what they're trying to do? But do you know that having faith in God, believing God, God, you are still in it all? And watch this. You get a flat tire, but you've got a spare in the trunk. You come over, you just delay it for a little while. Amen. Once you put the spare on, you're going back down the road. Can somebody say amen to that? testimony. We thank God for what God's doing at AFC. Uh, miracles do happen. I mean, it happened at uh, Fun Faith Cathedral. We just thank God for you listening to this great testimony of this young man. Amen. Semi-pro football player. Amen. Mr. Deion Waters that God healed. Amen. Somebody, not that you heard, but now you've seen uh, on this tape that he God does heal and he says now he's cancer free. Well, we thank God for it. Amen. If you have something wrong, Come and see us. We'll pray for you too. In Jesus' name. You want to say something to him as we go? Believe. Always have faith. We're going to have obstacles in our way all the time. But if you got a good rapport with God and you're in a church home, miracles can't happen. Amen. All right. Well, we got to go. Thank you, Mr. Waters, for, for being here for that testimony. We just thank God for you. Amen. And we thank God for you out there. And we hope to see you. Amen. You need prayer. Come see us down at Bonfay Cathedral. We will pray for you. We know God will set you free. Remember, your miracle is waiting on you. It doesn't matter.
matter about what the situation is, if we can believe God, if we can trust God, look at your Bible. I'm going to show you something. The Bible says uh, in the 20, look at the 23rd verse, love you 20, look at your Bible. And it says, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever, that is not predicated on what your name is. It's not predicated on where you come from. It's not predicated from your pedigree. It's not predicated on how much money you got in the bank. The Bible says that Jesus said that whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Mountain means something traumatic, something big, something bigger than you. Amen. In your life, a situation that you feel you have no control over, that might overwhelm you, a mountain, whatever it might be. I don't care. It could be a foot ache, a heartache. It could be even money in the bank. Come on. And not enough of it. Amen. The mountain that's in your life. Jesus was saying here that if you believe it and if you speak to the mountain, you got to speak to that problem that you have. Can I, can I help somebody here? It don't sense of putting up your dudes and want to beat, you know, that's old school. It don't sense of putting your dudes up and want to beat somebody up. The thing is speaking to the person, speaking to the situation, speaking to the mountain. Listen, I've had mountains on the job and I had to speak to them. Uh, people trying to hold me back. Amen. People saying things. Mother know what I'm talking about. People are, uh, when you're on the job, and you're doing your best, and you, especially get to church. Amen. Uh, they try it. Hello. Anybody been trying since they, they have job too? People try you on your job, but you got to hold fast to what you know. And people have, have tried to uh, uh, get me to act out, even so much so, is uh, uh, my work, you heard me say this before, my work groups. Amen. And I kept under my toolbox. When I pulled them out, no, when I looked at them, I said, something wrong with their work boots. And I looked over and they was wet. Somebody had took the time to go to, to the bathroom in my work boots. Come on, somebody. And they thought it was funny. But God warned me, hello, before I put them on. Because I should have been in trouble sloshing around in them kind of boots. Hello? But God is so good. And I knew who it was. And I did, let's put it like that. And so when I went to, I went to God and, and I talked to God about that particular person. And I told God, listen, this person is standing in my way. This person is trying me. So Lord, I want you to move him out of my way. I believe that you can do that. I'm not even going to say nothing bad to him. Can I tell you something? It wasn't long that, uh, that the man decided to retire. He was young. But he had enough time, and he got on up out of there. Why? Because God moved him right on out of the way. Come on and clap your hands and just give God some praise. Now, what's about you? We have to confess, proclaim God's word, no matter what the situation is. I told people to go to the dealership. They didn't have a dime. They were going to get a car because it was needed. I told people that God was going to heal them in the midst of their trials and tribulations. I told other people, uh, Juanita is, is a witness that when her baby, amen, was laying in the hospital, knew freedom, he was a freedom, and, and I told him he'd be all right, walk away. She thought I lost my mind. But Lou Lou is all right, amen. Got the faculty of this man. God say run around here. Why? Because when God says it, that's going to happen, no matter what anybody else says. I thank God for who he is. Come on, come on. It's, I thank God for him. <laughs> Believe in your heart. Believe that God's going to bring you to pass. Amen. Don't worry about what somebody else says. Their opinion don't matter. Amen. That's why I don't go to anybody. When I, if, I, if I need God to do something for me, I'm going to have the faith to trust God that God is going to bring me to pass. I want somebody as radical as me, amen, in faith to say, yeah, God will do it. It sounds crazy to the ear of someone else. But you know something? The crazier you get with God, amen, the crazier God will get with you, and you think that will blow your mind. Come on here. I close. Watch this. A lot of believers never move up this way. They stay small in God. Can you pray for me? Uh, well, you've been saved. You've been saved two years. You can't pray. Uh, you pray. Can you bless the food? Uh, well, you've been saved five years. You can't bless the food yet. 
Amen. Amen. And, uh, uh, the, the only story they had is, well, the devil just beat me up. Well, I would, I would if I could. Well, can I tell you a secret? I don't want to be around your kind of people. I want to be around somebody and say, God is able to do all things but fail. It doesn't matter what he wants to do. He can do it regardless of what anybody say. I'm for the King of Kings and the Lords of Lords. I'm going to speak his word. When everybody else looks in the other direction, I'm going to trust God. Come on here, somebody. I trust him with my life. I trust him with my health. And I trust him in my strength. Well, how did you enjoy it? Amen. Wasn't it wonderful? I tell you, the Lord is good. We want you to know that in dealing with your life and with God, you speak God's word. It's there. You have to have faith in God. Amen. Ever since I've been here, I know that's what you have to be. And once you do that, once you get your foot concreted in and stayed on the Lord, God will do some great things for you. Well, we want you to know that if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ by the pardon of, of your sins, you should right now. I want you to pray with me. Bow your heads. I want you to repeat after me. Say, Father, forgive me for what I've done. I am a sinner. I need salvation. Lord God, come into my heart. Come into my mind. Come into my soul. Save me. According to the Romans, the writer says that all that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Save me, Lord. Help me now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You prayed that prayer. We want you to contact us. Glory to God. We're going to give you some more instructions on some things that you should do. Amen. To go forward and, and to get in the house of God. Glory to God. And to live your life so that you can move forward. There are some more things to do. Amen. And they're not hard, but they are. Give us a call right here uh, at Abundant Faith Cathedral. Glory to God. And we will give you what you need. Amen. And help you. If you're not in the area, we'll tell you a nice church to go to. And uh, we just thank God for you tuning in. All my partners, we want to thank you all over the world. I want to give you thanks for all that you've done for us. Amen. Because God has been good to us. Well, listen, we'll tune in next week, same time, same station. And we hope to see you real soon right back here at the Bonifay Cathedral here at the Worship Center. Amen. This is your host, Pastor. Amen. Bishop like Joel T. Wallace. And we'll say we'll talk to you later now. Bye-bye. Amen. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. God is so good. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I I am Joe T. Wallace. Glory to God. Bishop elect. Welcome to this TV broadcast. My name is Mike Duggan, and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy, D. Hattie, watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves, and you're watching the Bell Global Network.